بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يعشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما تهاها ونفسا وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلها من زكاها وقد خاب من لساها كذبت سمود بتعواها إذا بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناكة الله وسكياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليه ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف وقباها صلوات محمد وعلى محمد صلوات ایخت میشا شاہن لکھا حبیب آ جاؤ تمہارا دوست ہے تنہا تمہارا دوست ہے تنہا حبیب شاہن لکھا حبیب آ جاؤ شہید کیسے ہوا ہو بتاؤ گے شاہن لکھا حبیب آ جاؤ بتا رہا تھا اسے کوئی بھی نہیں ہے میرا تو بولی سانی زہرہ حبیب آ شاہن لکھا حبیب آ جاؤ در بطول دوبارہ جلایا جائے گا تمہارے دوست پہ خنجر چلایا جائے گا نہیں ہے وقت زیادہ حبیب آ جاؤ یہ خط میں شاہن لکھا نہیں سے بہنوں کی آرزو سمجھو ہمارے لفظوں 
بلند سلوات فاتحہ باواز بلند سلوات اللہ حبیب دوستی کی قسم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم اٹھائی آپ نے جس طرح خاک پائے حسین شرف یہ مجھ کو بھی مل جائے کہ دعائے حسین اٹھاؤں خاک پہ جس پر رکھے ہیں شہن قدم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم حبیب آپ کو مولا کی دوستی کی قسم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم ہے ان کا واسطہ بس غم تھے جن کی قسمت میں دیا تھا جن کا حوالہ حسین نے ختمے 
جناب زہرا کے صدقے میں کیجئے یہ کرم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم حبیب آپ کو مولا کی دوستی کی قسم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم زمین والوں کے ہمراہا آسمان والے جہاں پہ عشق بہاتے ہیں دو جہاں والے میں اپنی آنکھوں سے ایک بار دیکھ لوں وہ حرم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم حبیب آپ کو مولا کی دوستی کی قسم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم حبیب ابن مظاہر سے یہ کہا میں نے اب آپ جانے شاہ جانے سیدہ جانے یہ لکھ کے رکھ دیا زیشان عابدی ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم حبیب آپ کو مولا کی دوستی کی قسم ہو میرا نام بھی فہرست عربائیں میں رقم چاند کربلا کے تو نے تو دیکھے ہوں گے اترے تھے اس زمین پر عرش بری کے تارے اے چاند کربلا کے اے چاند جلوہ گر ہے چاند یہاں پر خیرات روشنی کی لے لیجیو یہاں سے اے چاند اس زمین پر رکھیو ہمیں 
हमेशा ठंडक सोते जो हैं यहाँ पर जहरा के हैं वो प्यारे चांद खुर और हबीब जैसे Just a, a quick announcement, but very important, especially for the ladies' side. Um, for the sisters, when you enter, you'll see some eight-foot-tall partitions on your side. We have put some signs over there. They are eight feet tall. You won't miss it. There's a sign for do not touch. 
please do not try and pull those further out. They are not meant to be stretched out. Uh, they will, it will uh, make them fall and there'll be a safety issue. So please don't pull them out. Uh, if you have any concerns, uh, you can talk to Sister Aram on the ladies' side. So extremely important because we have younger kids in that area as well. Please do keep an eye on them. Secondly, um, Alhamdulillah, the last couple of days, I think we've been doing really well with the cleanliness. Uh, please do keep it up. Um, um, when you're leaving, uh, please, uh, if you see anything around the area, use the garbage next to us. But uh, Jazakallah for all of you for your cooperation. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Everyone keep two sides one to the past here for all moment in the moment out the past away please. MashaAllah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. Wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-masumin al-mazlumin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri. Wa yasili amri. Wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Amma ba'tu. Faqad kala subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ عَيْمَةً يَحْكُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا سَابَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُقِنُونَ Recite salawat, please. Inshallah, for the reappearance of the twelfth imam, recite another salawat, please. I recited the verse of Surah Mubarakah Al-Sajda, verse number 24. In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surely we have made from amongst them Imam, who guide people with our command, and they are steadfast, and they were believers in our signs, in our verses. Like we discussed, in the previous nights, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that whenever there are imams, they are appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waja'alna minhum, waja'alna hum in different verses. So, is it our belief that the imam is appointed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And thus the concept mansus in Allah, that every Shia should know, and I said it again, that Allah tells the messenger, the messenger does not appoint the imam from himself. It is not upon the messenger. Yes, Allah appoints, he shows. He shows in ghadir qum people did ask the Prophet, the Prophet said, I am not appointing Ali from myself. He showed who after him is. So, Mansus min Allah in the Shia concept. But other schools of thought, we said they have different versions. And uh, we said basically there are three meanings. First meaning is Khalifa, Caliph. Second meaning is Imam, Fiqh, just somebody who you follow in religious 
uh, affairs. And thirdly, we said that is he a ruler. Now yesterday, we discussed the words the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding, we talked about the first sign, khilafat. Yeah? So we said, before I go on to this, we said that this imamat, the concept of imamat is from usul deen amongst all schools of thoughts. And the reason for that is man mata lam yaref imama zamanihi mata mitadan jahiliya. This is a hadith which is agreed by all schools of thought because of this, because mitadan jahiliya. That means if you do not believe in the imam, you have died ignorant. So you're not a Muslim, you're not a believer. So because of this part of the uh, hadith, it means that it is from usul deen Now we discussed what does the Quran tell us about Khilafat. Obviously there's many ahadith, and then someone might say, oh, it's a tradition, it's not from the Quran. So we mentioned the verse of the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inni ja'ilun fil arde khalifa. And we talked, this was before there was any man, when Allah created Adam, he said to the angels, surely I will make on earth a inheritor or a vice student or a khalifa. Yeah, whatever you want to translate khalifa as. Now the angels who are intellectual beings, they are obedient beings, they spoke up. They, uh, we can say, better to say, that they raised a concern that you will make somebody who's going to yufsidu fiha. He's going to cause corruption. He's going to spill blood. You are going to make him the inheritor while we glorify your name. So we have a standard here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you do not know what I know. Yeah? La ta'lamuna, you don't know what I know. So we said that these angels that are masoom, intelligent beings, they themselves cannot appoint a khalifa. So how can we sinners, we people that don't have the same sort of obedience, how can we appoint a khalifa? Because Allah's ways do not change. In the Quran, there's many verses like that. So the angels had a test with Adam alayhi salam, and Adam alayhi salam passed the test. Now, the angels, like I said, they knew the names, but they couldn't match what the names were. And as time went on, and the time of the last messenger came, and Hazrat Jabbar ibn Abdullah Ansari narrates that once Lady Fatima, salamullah alayha, <coughs> she said the father came the Holy Messenger, my father came and he said, I feel some weakness. And he said, Give, bring me my cloak. So the cloak uh, from Yemen is called uh, uh, Yamani, uh, Kasai Yamani. The Prophet took that and as we know, especially the children should know this story, this great baraka in this hadith, uh, we were, it was on the projection earlier on also. So one by one, Imam Hassan came Imam Hussain came, Mawla Ali came, then Lady Zahra, she also came underneath the cloak. Now, when they came underneath the cloak, the Prophet said some beautiful words. Lahmuhum lahmi, damuhum dami, Allahumma inna haulai ahlu bayti. Their flesh, the ones that are underneath the cloak, their flesh is my flesh, their blood, is my blood, and oh Allah, these are my Ahlul Bayt. Now Jabrail and many angels used to come and go. We, we have traditions that they used to rock Imam Hussain's cradle. Now they're watching on the heavens, and yet they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man tahtal kisai. It's really, really strange. They know Muhammad, peace be upon him, on his own as a light. They know Mora Ali, they know Imam Hassan and Hussain 
on their own as a light, but when the five were together underneath the cloak, they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is underneath the cloak? Just like on the day when they were tested, they did not know who the lights were. Same again underneath the cloak, although they knew them individually, they still did not understand. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced who is underneath the cloak. Hum Fatima to wa abuha wa ba'luha wa banuha. Recite salawat please. These are the real fundamentals of our belief. Now look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, somebody who is on a higher status, like for instance, if somebody's a doctor and he's famous, everybody will introduce, this is doctor's son, this is doctor's father, this is doctor's mother, this is doctor, you introduce with somebody who's on the higher status. So I would say Allah subhanahu wa should have said, this is Muhammad and his daughter and his son-in-law and his grandsons. Allah did not introduce like that. Allah said it is Fatima and her father and her husband and her sons. We do not have any problem with admitting who is Ahlul Bayt. But Allah has told us, told us that whoever is related to Fatima, they are the Ahlul Bayt. It is not upon us to make sure that the Prophet's wives are included in the Ahlul Bayt. So Allah introduced, now the ulama say in Arabic language you have singular, then you have dual, then you have plural, right? So one, two, and then plural. Not like English, one and then plural. So it should have, should have been two, yeah? But Mia, Banu, Banu, should have been two, yeah? But it's Banuha, yeah? They're sons. So the ulama says, although the Aima, the rest of the Aima went present, but they were present inside Imam Hussein, thus they are also included in this uh, gathering. Recite salawat, please. <coughs> and as we know, this is the backdrop to Ayat al-Kheed. This hadith e is uh, the point of revelation of Ayat al-Kheed. Now, we talked about this verse, that in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, surely I will make the imam. And it gives us a standard that whoever will be khalifa, he will be ma'asum and he will be knowledgeable. Recite salawat, please. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know, Adam alayhi salam gained superior, superiority over the angels. Now, I said that Allah did not answer the angels. He just said that you do not know what I know. That's a reply. But he did not answer their questions because the angels said, oh Allah, they know the high station. They would not want it if it wasn't a high station. They would not want Khilafat if it wasn't a high station. They knew it was a high station and they wanted it. They had the urge for it. That's why they said that we do your tasbih. We glorify your name. So Allah just said, you don't know what I know. That is not an answer. That is just a reply. Imam Ghazali writes, he says that Allah did not answer them. And time went past. Time passed till the last messenger came. And a time came when Prophet, peace be upon him, had to migrate. You know the migration? He asked Amir al-Mu'mineen, Oh Ali, you will sleep on my bed tonight. Now the love of Imam Ali and Rasulullah is second to none. It is said it's the training of Hazrat Abu Talib also, that even before 
the prophet uh, that the Alan told Tipu Zahm, the prophet, the Hazrat Abu Talib used to change his sons and the prophet in the beds. He used to change them every second, third night. He used to change them around. So it wasn't a new thing for Imam Ali to sleep on the Prophet's bed, but this night was very, very important because amongst, they said when the people gathered from different tribes, they said, what should we do about Muhammad? He is saying bad to our idols. It is said it is shaitan who came two, three times that gave them the idea that one man from each tribe should come from the house and attack all at once. So Bani Hashem cannot get revenge because everybody's involved in the murder. So it was Shaitan's advice to them. So it's a very, very dangerous moment in history that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had to migrate. Now, it's human nature that whenever one always thinks for his own life, it's very, very logical. Prophet is saving his own life and tell Ali to take his place. No one else could have taken Prophet's place either because it's a narration from Bibi Aisha that in the darkness, if I ever lost something, when the Prophet used to come with the light of the Prophet's face, I could find it. Like if she lost a needle or whatever, <laughs> she sees the light of the Prophet's face, I could find what have I lost. So someone who had the same light, same feature, same everything, only because the enemy would know there's no light. If there's no light, that the prophet's not there. So only Ali could have slept there anyway. So when the prophet asked, history tells us, when the prophet asked Mullah to sleep on his bed, the prof, uh, Imam Ali's reply was, Ya Rasulullah, by me sleeping on your bed, will you be safe? It's absolutely extraordinary that he is not saying what will happen to me. Amirul Mu'mineen is not saying, will I be safe? You will go. Will I be safe? No. He's saying, with my sleeping on your bed, will you? But maybe we should be uh, astounded by it because in, in, the, in the battle of Uhud, when everybody left, everybody ran away, and they left him Amir al-Mu'mineen on his own, and he was still fighting. One person came and said to Amir al-Mu'mineen that, oh Ali, everybody ran away. Why did you not run away? So Mullah said to him, why don't you ask those who ran away, why did they run away? So the person went to the ones that had run away. He said, why did you run away? They said we had a cry, the shaitan also again, that Mata Muhammad, that Muhammad is dead. So when we heard that Muhammad is dead, we thought there is no point in fighting. So that's why we ran for our lives. And some ran so fast they reached Medina. So they said that because Mata Muhammad, Muhammad's dead, there's no. So the guy came back to Amir al Mu'mineen and he said, that their answer is because we had Mata Muhammad, that's why we ran away. Imam Amir al Mu'mineen says, when I heard Mata Muhammad, I thought there's no point in living. I might as well die myself also. <laughs> so don't tell us that everyone is equal, there's a big difference, huge difference. Now, Mola slept on the bed. Mola slept on the bed, and in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Imam Ghazali saying, he called Jabrail and Mikail alayhim salam he called them both, and he this is the answer that why Adam was superior to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I make you both brothers. Hazrat Jibreel and Hazrat Mikail, I make you both brothers, but one will live longer than the other. So which one of you would give his life for the other? So one, one will live long and one would live short. So both of them were quiet. 
both of them were quiet. When both of them were quiet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look down on earth. Look at Ali. He is sacrificing himself for his brother. And Imam Ghazali writes that Allah told them to go come down on earth and protect Imam Ali. Both of them came down and they said, Ya Ali, man mithluk. O Ali, who is like you? Bakhin, bakhin, is like salawat. So the answer why Adam had superiority, uh, although what the angels were, the answers was this, according to Imam Ghazali, Sayyid Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in our belief, the Imam has to be infallible. That is one of the conditions. And like I said yesterday, he has to be A'lam. Now, with this A'lam that he has to be the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable, it comes other things like he has to be the most just. Justice is also a very, very, because we're talking about uh, Islamic rule political Islamic uh, governance. So in that sense, he has to be just also. The, all the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for us, we believe Adal also as a part of uh, Usul al-Deen. Allah is just, his, all his messengers are just, and all the successors are just also. Th this is the condition. If the messenger leaves somebody behind who is not just, then there will be corruption. One hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen is that a government can stay with being kafir, but it cannot survive by being unjust. And we see corruption all over the world. Wherever there is corruption, there is no justice, then the people have to rise. Recite salawat, please. So the messenger of Allah says, Ma, me and Ali are the same in justice. We are on the same level of justice. Once Hazrat Salman al-Farsi, he went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he asked him for something, give me something. The Prophet was eating uh, dates, and he gave some dates from the palm of his hand, he gave some dates to Hazrat Salman al-Farsi. So Hazrat Salman al-Farsi came out and he counted them and they were nine. So he went to Amir al-Mu'mineen and uh, he says, oh, Ali, g give me something. So Imam also was eating dates and he gave him a handful. Hazrat Salman farsi started counting them. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, if the Prophet would have given you more, O oh Salman, I would have also given you some more. So they're on the same level of justice. And if you go to Kufa, inshallah, some of you have been, and some of you haven't, but inshallah you will go, you will see there's a place where Amir al-Mu'mineen used to sit, and he used to uh, rule amongst people. It is said that Amir al-Mu'mineen he transferred his uh, capital from Medina to Kufa. Some people disagree that he, it was a wrong decision, but in actual fact, because Medina, the true fact, is because Medina was haram of Rasulullah, and as you know, capitals all over the world, through, especially in the olden days, they've been destroyed because it's the capital, the center of the government, but Imam Ali moved it to Kufa, which was a garrison. Now, Amir, well, maybe in the coming lectures, I'll talk about the other caliphs also. But Amir al Mu'mineen, when he came to Kufa to rule Kufa, he made it his capital. When he came there, he, he was shown the, the government buildings. He was shown it, and they said to oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, stay here. Amir al Mu'mineen refused to stay there. 
and they asked why why do you know what to stay in the government building mom replied i smell zulm from this building i smell injustice corruption i smell it sumola so stayed in his own house he built a house and if you look after 1400 years that government building does not exist but amir al mu'minin's house still exists today is still because of the smell it is said the previous people have said that that darul umara used to still have a smell it still used to have a smell throughout but the, after saddam i think they demolished it it doesn't exist anymore but mola's house exists recite salawat please <coughs> So Mola used to sit in Masjid e Kufa, and he used to do, he used to judge between people. Now there's many, many different situations that people came to Mola. I'm just going to say a couple, and then uh, then move on. Uh, once there was this girl; she wasn't married, but her stomach we, came out. Her brothers were about to kill her because she wasn't married, and how her stomach. is so big so they were going to kill her but they brought the case to amir al mu'minin and in masjid e kufa there is a place called maqam e tasht so mola ordered that a big pot be brought and the lady was told to sit the girl was told to sit in it what happened is she went to have a bath somewhere and some insect or some small creature he went inside her and because of that her stomach had blown up it was nothing else so when she she sat in the hot water that insect came out and she was freed from whatever she was blamed for the site salawat please <coughs> that maqam e tasht is still there in masjid e kufa another case was this young man he came to mola crying he was crying a uh, mola asked was why are you crying he said my father he went with three friends to do some business and i'm sure my father he had some money he had some uh, belongings but they came back told me that my father's died and uh, he had nothing so i went to the the jurist of kufa and he ruled because it was three of them and me alone so he ruled in their favor because i don't have any proof of what my uh, father had so amir al mu'minin said okay bring them three the three of them were brought before amir al mu'minin and amir al mu'minin he is only one who could say that i will rule today like my brother hazrat daud alai salam ruled so he told them three to be separated and he said to one of them the first one to come now the first man came amir al mu'minin said okay start from the beginning what day did you travel so the person goes we traveled on this day amir al mu'minin says okay then what happened he goes he fell ill such and such a date he fell ill and then he said such and such a date the person died Amir al-Mu'minin Amir al-Mu'minin had told that once I finish uh, the interrogation everybody say a loud takbir now those two other two guys are separate they don't uh, against a pillar separate they're not listening to the conversation so this guy he told their agreed story and everybody said a loud takbir and then he was told to leave now when the second man came he wasn't as confident his story was not matching because he had the loud takbir and he thought the first ones probably told the whole story so he as we say he spilled the beans he said oh amir al mu'minin i've got nothing to do with the killing these people they killed him for his money took all his belongings and i am free from it and then again another loud takbir and then he was sent away and the third person came and he also confessed to the killing of this innocent man and the the young boy was given 
what he was owed by these three, and these three were given justice, we know, by Amir al-Mu'mineen. Recite salawat, please. <laughs> so one of the most important thing is the imam will have to be just. It's a very, very important. If he is not just, if he sits on the member and says, oh people, you guide me. Imam itself means leader. Imam means leader, the one who's at the front, not the one who's saying, if I go wrong, you guide me. So that means he's not appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, it's very, very important to know your religion. Know why, why we are called Imamiya. Why, why, why are we following these 12 Imams? Remember I told you yesterday that the number 12 is also very important because uh, in the Quran chapter 5 verse 12 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we made amongst them 12 successors. It's very easy to know this. Uh, chapter 5 verse 12. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I made 12 successors. It's talking about Bani Israel. And all the prophets, they had 12 successors. Bani Israel had 12 successors. And you know, the, the, the Sahaba had a very good uh, a culture that whenever a verse came, they used to ask the prophet, what does it mean? And when this verse came, one companion, he asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, that how many successors will you have? And the Prophet, in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, in different books, is written that the Prophet said, after me, there will be 12 Khulafa, or 12 men, or 12 men amongst Bani Hashim, or 12 men from Quraysh. So our belief is not just something in the air. And we, like I said, one after the other, one after the other, Imama Zamani, he, that who is the Imam, if we were to take that the first four caliphs, they were the caliphs, and the continuation right up to the Ottoman Empire, who is the caliph now? For the last 80 to 100 years, there has been no one. So it has to be an Imam who is present and guiding all us, recite the loud salawat for the 12th Imam, please. Do Muharram ko Mawla Karbala pahunche hain aur aap ki aane ke baad lashkar kashi shuru ho gai hain. Ab lashkar par lashkar a rahe hain पर इमाम का साह फेरे कोई नहीं आ रहा। बीबी ज़ैनब सलामुल्लाह लाया पूछती हैं कि क्या मेरे भाई की मदद को कोई आया है? जब भी शोर होता है, अब जब ये आते थे ना तो बाजे बजाते हुए, ढोल बजाते हुए, शोर मचाते हुए, जो भी लश्कर आता था, जैसे उम्रे साद लेके आया है, खोली लेके आया है, शिमल लेके आया जब शोर होता था तो बीबी पूछती थी तो खबर मिलती थी कि शिमर आया है 3000 के साथ 5000 के साथ इस तरह जो लश्कर आ रहे थे तो बीबी ने फिर बीबी फिज्जा को कहा कि मेरे भाई को बुलाएं जब इमाम हुसैन अलैहि सलाम आए हैं तो बीबी ने कहा कि भैया आपका कोई नहीं जिसको हम बुलाएं जो आपकी मदद को आए तो मौला ने तो कुछ देर सोचा है फिर कहा हां एक मेरा दोस्त है हबीब हबीब को बुलाता हूं तो मौला ने फिर हबीब इब्न मजाहिर के नाम खत लिखा हबीब जो हैं वो सहाबी रसूल भी हैं इनके वालिद साहब भी सहाबी रसूल थे और इनके बारे में ये लिखा है कि जब ये छोटे थे बच्चे थे तो रसूल ने इनको देखा कि ये इमाम हुसैन अलैहि सलाम के पीछे पीछे चल रहे हैं और पीछे पीछे चल के जहां मौला के कदम हैं वहां से मिट्टी उठा के और उसका भूसा ले रहे हैं उस मिट्टी को उठा के चूम रहे हैं तो रसूल ने इस बच्चे को गोद में उठाया और इसको बहुत प्यार किया 
कि ये मेरे हुसैन का है चाहने वाला है अब मौला ने खत लिखा है हबीब इबन मजाह को आपका कासिद जब कोफा पहुंचा है तो कहते हैं कि हजरत हबीब खजाब खरीद रहे थे दाढ़ी अपनी रंगने के लिए तो इस बंदे को कुछ निशानियां पता थी इसने सोचा हबीब ही हैं तो हबीब से बात की है तो हबीब ने कहा कि मेरे पीछे पीछे आओ ये पीछे पीछे चला है घर के पास पहुँच कर अंदर आया है तो इसने फिर हजरत हबीब को मौला का ख़त दिया है अब हबीब अंदर आए हैं जोजा भी साथ है ख़त को चूमा है जोजा ने पूछा क्या है कहा मेरे मौला की तरफ से ख़त आया है हबीब ख़त चूमते हैं फिर खोलते हैं ख़त की इबारत है मिन हुसैन इबन फातिमा इला रजुलफ़ी अरब का दस्तूर है कि बाप का नाम ही लेते हैं पर जब परेशानी हो तो तब ही माँ का नाम लेते हैं मौला ने कहा फातिमा के बेटे हुसैन से रजुलफ़ी हबीब इबन मज़ाहर के नाम ख़त है ए हबीब आप शायद ना जानते हो दो मुहर्रम से मैं करबला में हूँ और मैं दुश्मनों के घेरे में हूँ हबीब मैं आपको कभी जहमत ना देता पर फातिमा की बेटी और बच्चे मेरे साथ हैं अगर हो सकता है तो मेरी मदद को आए और अगर ना आ सके तो क्यामत वाले दिन मुलाकात होगी अब हबीब ने ये ख़त अपनी जोजा को पढ़ के सुनाया और चुप हो गए मोमना थी कहा ए हबीब क्या इरादा है कहता सोच रहा हूँ मोमना ने कहा क्या सोच रहे हो फर्जंद रसूल बुला रहा है तुम सोच रहे हो हबीब ने कहा मैं सोच रहा हूँ कि तेरा क्या बनेगा अगर मैं लड़ने गया तो इबन जहा हमारा घर हमारा खाना सब खराब कर देगा तू लावारस हो जाएगी तो मोमना ने कहा उधर रसूल की बेटियाँ तनहा हैं और तुझे मेरी फिक्र है और जोश में आकर कहा अगर तूने घर बैठना है तो बैठ या अल्लाह काश मैं मर्द होती और मैं नुसरत फातिमा के बेटे को जाती हबीब ने उसको कहा कि चुप कर बैठ जा मैं सिर्फ तुझे देख रहा था कि तू क्या कहती है हबीब ने अपने गुलाम को कहा कि मेरा घोड़ा ले और रात के वक्त फलाक मुकाम पे कोफे के बाहर जो है मेरा इंतज़ार करें हालात ख़राब हैं कोफे के कर्फ्यू है कोफे के अंदर ना कोई अंदर आ सकता है ना कोई बाहर जा सकता है बड़ी मुश्किल से हबीब जो हैं वो बाहर निकले हैं कोफे से जब बाहर निकले हैं ना तो जिस मुकाम पे गुलाम को कहा था गुलाम उधर था पर जो घोड़ा था ना वो मुस्तरब था घोड़ा आवाज़ें निकाल रहा था तो जो गुलाम था वो घोड़े को कह रहा था ए घोड़े फिक्र ना कर अगर आका ना आई ना तो मैं तुझ पे सवार हो के हुसैन की नुसरत को जाऊंगा। जैसे ये हबीब ने अल्फाज सुने हबीब ने कहा है मौला आप कितने गरीब हैं कि गुलाम भी आपकी नुसरत को इसने गुलाम को कहा घोड़े पे बैठे हैं गुलाम को कहा कि तू आज़ाद है जिधर दिल चाहता है तू चला जा गुलाम ने कहा है आका मैं आपके साथ जाना चाहता हूँ कहते हैं कि गुलाम भी मौला की नुसरत को सात मुहरम को कहते हैं कि हबीब सात या आठ मुहरम को करबला में पहुँचे हैं मौला के पास बारह आलम थे और सबसे जो बड़ा आलम था वो हजरत अब्बास को दिया था और बाकी दस अलम जो हैं वो किसी न किसी को दिए हुए थे एक अलम जो है वो किसी को ना दिया था असहाब ने पूछा था कि ये अलम किसका है मौला इंतज़ार कर रहे थे कि ये अलम किसके लिए अलम का मतलब है कि आप कमांडर हैं एक साइड के किसी फ्लैंक के राइट साइड के लेफ्ट साइड के 
میمنا کے میسرا کے آپ کمانڈر ہیں تو حضرت حبیب کا انتظار ہو رہا تھا جیسے آپ آئیں حضرت حبیب تو مولا نے حضرت علی اکبر کو کہا کہ جا کے ان کا استقبال کرو ایک بہت بڑی تکبیر کی صدا ہوئی اور حضرت علی اکبر نے حبیب کا استقبال کیا جب بی بی زینب نے سنا تو پوچھا کہ کون آیا ہے بتایا گیا کہ حبیب ابن مظاہر آئے ہیں اس پہ بی بی نے اممہ فضا کو کہا کہ ہمارا بھی سلام حبیب بھائی کو پہنچا دیں ادھر گفتگو ہو رہی تھی مولا حسین اور حبیب میں کہ اتنے میں حضرت علی اکبر آئے اور کہا اے حبیب اے چچا حبیب آپ کو فاطمہ کی بیٹی سلام کہہ رہی ہے حبیب زمین پر گر پڑے اور کہا کدھر حبیب تیرا نصیب رسول کی بیٹیاں تجھے سلام کہہ رہی ہیں مومنو یہ جب صبح شور ہوئی اصحاب مولا نے ان کو کہا کہ ہم عرب کے دستور کے مطابق ایک ایک کر کے لڑیں گے کیونکہ اگر کٹھا حملہ ہوتا تو جنگ بہت جلدی ختم ہو جاتی تو ایک ایک کر کے اصحاب جو ہیں وہ لڑنے جا رہے تھے اور اپنے آپ کو اپنے مولا پر فدا کر رہے تھے ایک ایک کر کے جا رہے تھے اتنے میں زہر کی نماز کا وقت ہو گیا اور آپ کے مولا کے ایک صحابی نے مولا کو کہا کہ وقت سلات ہو گیا ہے نماز کا وقت ہو گیا ہے تو مولا نے اس کو دعا دی تھوڑا سا ٹائم باقی تھا مولا نے کہا ابھی نہیں ہے اور مولا نے اس نے کہا کہ اس حالت میں بھی تُو نے سلات کو یاد کیا ہے اللہ تجھے مسلیم کے ساتھ معشور فرمائے مولا نے اس کو دعا دی امپورٹنس آف سلات ہیر کی نماز اس حالت میں بھی حسین کو بھی کتنی پیاری تھی اور آپ کے اصحاب کو بھی کتنی پیاری تھی مولا نے حبیب کو کہا کہ تم ان لوگوں سے جا کے کہو کہ جنگ کو روک دیا جائے تاکہ ہم نماز ادا کر لیں جب حبیب ان کے پاس گئے ہیں تو ایک نام مراد حسین اس کا نام ہے اس کو جب کہا نا کہ جنگ روک دی جائے تاکہ نماز کا ادا کر لے مولا تو اس نے کہا کہ تمہاری تمہاری نماز کا کوئی فائدہ نہیں ہے تو اتنے میں حبیب کو جلال آ گیا اس نے کہا کہ تمہاری نماز قبول اور فرزند رسول کی نماز قبول نہیں ہے تو حبیب نے پھر مولا کو اپنا آخری سلام کہا اور جنگ شروع کر دی حبیب بھی ضعیف تھے عمر میں کافی ضعیف تھے پر تاریخ لے لکھا ہے کہ ساٹھ یا اسی بندوں کو انہوں نے پھر نار کیا ہے اور اس کے بعد پھر آپ نے مولا کو فریاد کی ہے سلام کیا ہے اور مولا آئے اور انہوں نے حبیب کا سر اپنے زانوں پہ لیا اور کہتے ہیں کہ ایک خستگی سی امام حسین کے چہرے پر تھی ایک نا امیدی سی مولا کے چہرے پہ آ گئی اور کہا یا اللہ گواہ رہنا کہ حبیب نے اپنی قربانی دی لا لانت اللہ ہے علا قوم الظالمین سیالم اللذین ظلم ویم انکل ینکل زون سمات میں ہوئی سے حسین یا حسین یا حسین حسین یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین Hur 
के सूरज जो समझ में कहीं आ जाए हुसैन हुर के सूरज जो समझ में कहीं आ जाए हुसैन हुर के सूरज जो समझ में कहीं आ जाए हुसैन हुर के सूरज जो समझ में कहीं आए हुसैन एक एक सांस सदा देने लगे हाय हुसैन हुर के सूरज जो समझ में कहीं आ जाए हुसैन हुर के सूरज जो समझ में कहीं आ जाए हुसैन सर उठाता नहीं सज दे से खुदा का महबूब सर उठाता नहीं सज दे से खुदा का महबूब आपकी पोस्ट से जब तक ना उतर जाए हुसैन हुर की सूरत जो समझ में कहीं आ जाए समझ में कहीं आ जाए हुसै मौत भी आई तो कद मोह से उठी ले के हया मौत भी आई तो कद मोह से उठी ले के हया बन गई खा के शिफा खा के कफे पाए हुसै नहीं करता खुदा को 
करबल में आ गए हैं करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल में आ गए करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल में आ गए हैं करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल सब मिलके पढ़े बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले ये दर वो पाक दर है जो फाते माँ का दर है ये प्यारे मुस्तफा का मौला ली का घर है मकतल में बसाने वाले मौला मौला मदीने वाले करबल में आ गए हैं करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले ये दर वो पाक दर है जो फाते माँ का दर है ये प्यारे मुस्तफा का मौला ली का घर है मकतल में आ गए हैं कुरे सुनाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल में आ गए हैं करबल बसाने वाले मदीने वाले करबल में करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल में आ गए हैं बसाने वाले इस्लाम ने पुकारा कुरान ने सदा दी यस रब का शाहजादा यस रब का शाहजादी निकले सफर को घर से कल माँ बचाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल में आ गए करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले खैमे सजा रहे हैं वादा निभाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल में करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले रो रो के बोली सुगरा दिल डूबता है मेरा वीरा किया मदीना जंगल में है बस 
सब मिलके निवाले करबल में आ गए हैं करबल बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले खैमे सजा रहे हैं वादा निभाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले सब लुट गई कमाई अकबर ने बर्ची खाई असगर ने तीर खाया देती थी माधुहाई तीरों के साय में है सजदे में जाने बसाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले खैमे सजा रहे हैं वादा निभाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल शोर था फलक पर कहता था रब अकबर जिबरील बादलों का जल्दी बिछाओ बिस्तर जन्नत में आ रहे हैं कुरिया बचाने वाले मौला मदीने वाले मौला मदीने वाले करबल बसाने वाले मौला हक के माम या हसन या हुसैन मौला हक के माम या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन वो आबिदे बीमार था वो मार था चलने से जो लाचार था चार था और शाम का बाजार था और शाम का बाजार था और मुस्तफा की बेटियां मौला हक या हसन या हुसैन मौला हक या हसन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन शबीर की वो लाडली डली सीने पे जो शाह के पली सीने पे जो शाह के पली जिसकी अबा बन में जली जिसकी अबा में जली मुंह पर तमा चो के निशान मौला हक या हसन या हुसैन मौला हक माम या हसन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन या उसे अलाव मासलेरा अल्लाहु में सल्लियानो सल्लियानो मतोजे जर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि या रसूल अल्लाह अस्सलामु अलैहि या नबी अल्लाह 
السلام عليك يا خيرة الله السلام عليك يا حبيب الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا حسين الشهيد بكربلاء السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن سيد الوصيل السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله الآخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك يا أبو الفضل العباس وأختك أم المصايب زينب السلام عليك على جميع المستشهدين بين يديك ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا غريب الغرباء السلام عليك يا معين الضعفاء والفقراء السلام عليك يا مغيث الشيعة والزوار في يوم الجزاء السلام عليك يا سلطان أبو الحسن علي بن موسى الرضا الراضي بالقدر والقضاء ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدي ومولاي يا صاحب العصر والزمان الأمان 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 من فتن الزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا إمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله مخرجك وظهورك واجعلنا من عوانك وانصارك ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين رحم الله من يقرأ سورة الفاتحة والأخلاص والصلوات للرحمن المؤمنين المؤمنات Brother sister please uh, recite some Surah Fatiha Man Ikhlas uh, for the needs of the Marhumin which are displayed on the projector Rahimallah may Yaqrub Surah Al-Fatiha Ma'a Salaam Sisters, uh, Namazi Maghribain will be at 9.30. Please get ready by that time, inshallah. 